So today I will present Duogenen, which is a novel graph neural network. We define a graph as a set of nodes and edges where the node color, the node, the node class, and these are the node embeddings. Homophily is a property of graph for which the edges of the graph will likely to connect the node with the same class. As you can see here, this is an example. The opposite of this property is heterophily, and so an heterophilic graph will likely have edges between different classes. Throughout this work, we will consider the learning task of node classification, and so our model will have to manipulate the embeddings to predict the classes. Graph neural networks, or GNNs, are machine learning models which make use of recursive neighborhood aggregations to process graphs. As you can see here, the embedding of the initial node is updated thanks to the embeddings of its neighbors, also called first hop neighbors. And this happened in the first aggregation. As we do this iteratively, we will consider always more distant nodes. And this ensures that these models will find it easy to capture short range interactions. Unfortunately, they will find it harder to capture long range interactions between distant nodes. You may think, why don't we just stack many aggregation layers and capture long range interactions? Unfortunately, deep GNN, GNNs fails to do so. In fact, they suffer from two main limitations. The first one is over smoothing, which happens when the model fails to distinguish between different classes after a certain amount of aggregations. As you can see here, as we aggregate, the embeddings will become undistinguishable to the model. And this leads to bad classification accuracy, and it's caused by heterophilic edges. The other limitation is over squashing, which happens when different areas of the graph are not well connected. Also leads to bad accuracy, and it's caused by graph bottlenecks. While there are several popular solutions to solve the long-range interaction detection problem, these are either too expensive and so not scalable, or fail to generalize across different graph structures. Instead, our goal is to design a scalable and generalizable solution to capture short and long-range interactions in any graph. And our solution to this problem is Duogenen, which I will now present. This is the architecture and pipeline of Duogenen, which is composed by an interaction decoupling stage, parallel transformation stage, and prediction stage. The core idea behind Duogenen is to implement a dual pipeline which can learn, in parallel, short and long-range interactions. Let's see how the first stage works. Here, we try to decouple between short and long range interactions. We take the input graph, compute a edge connectivity measure, it could be, for example, a centrality measure, and we remove the bottlenecks. This will be the resulting graph, which will have no bottlenecks and a higher homophily. This leads to preventing over squashing and over smoothing. On the other hand, this will also remove long range interactions within the graph, as the graph is now clustered in different con connected components. On the other hand, this graph will only preserve short range interactions as the number of edges removed is minimal. For this reason, we proceed with a heterophilic graph condensation for which every connected component will select one node and then we will build a fully connected graph within this. The resulting graph will be heterophily, as connected nodes will likely to be distant in the previous graph and will mostly represent long-range interactions of the original graph. Now we can proceed with a dual transformation stage which processes both graphs in parallel. The homophily graph is processed by a standard general model, while the other it's processed by a variation of this, which do not only consider the last output of the last aggregation, but the aggregation at every layer. A more detailed explanation on the math can be found in the paper. Let's proceed with the last stage, which is the prediction stage. Here, we concatenate both outputs 
and process them through a linear layer to get the predictions. And this ensures that the model will consider short and long range interactions to do the predictions. This was DuoGNN. Now we can proceed with the experiments. We first test our model on organ S, showing an increase in the accuracy of 2.52% and also that our model is much more scalable than graph attention networks. We also test on organ C, which is another medical dataset, with showing an average accuracy of 3.33% and also that our model is much more scalable than graph attention networks, which in this case return an out-of-memory error to process the dataset. So why is our model so good? It's because it's scalable. In fact, it does not rely on expensive connected components such as attention, but also generalizable, as it makes no assumptions on the graph topology, density and size. Finally, DuoGNN opens the door towards the research, new research directions. The first is the fact that DuoGNN still relies on expensive connectivity measures. For example, computing curvature on dense graphs is challenging, but how can we avoid doing so and detect bottlenecks with less expensive connectivity measures? Also, DuoGNN introduces a one sensible hyperparameter to define how many edges it has to remove. How can we learn it instead and reduce the fine-tuning complexity of the model? This completes the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.